I'm currently learning about enmeshment and wondering if that's what is going on with me, but I finally got my boyfriend slash ex to agree to do the quiz. He's a spice of lifer. He agreed to do the course as well, so I bought it. He also said he needed space to work on himself and promised that he would do the course. Two weeks later, he hasn't even started, but I don't know how to inspire him. Um, and specifically looking for guidance on how to get him to see the importance. So this is actually one of those questions where we have to sift and sort through what we can control and what we cannot control. So yes, it is possible that in time you might um, inspire a partner to want to meet you where you're at on your personal growth journey and trajectory um, that can happen, but it doesn't happen through efforting to inspire them. It happens through efforting to inspire yourself. And once you allow yourself to be of the highest priority in that circumstance, that is when they feel inspired because what are they, you, you mentioned, I think he's avoiding it through a pattern of people pleasing, which is something that's created issues in our relationship. But by your seeking to inspire him, you're also kind of expressing the same energy. So by putting all the efforting into getting him to do something, it's a similar type of vibration or frequency that's going on. So, and this is the thing, oh, but if I let him go, then maybe he won't do it. Yeah. Maybe he won't. And what does that mean? It means you have super good information. It means that maybe if you're going to be with him, you're going to be in a relationship where you're constantly after someone to care about things that you value and that you prioritize and that you think are important, right? So do you want that? Is that what you want? So it's a bigger question. How do I inspire him? It's more like, how can I keep myself inspired and trust that everything is unfolding um, in its due time and process and allow my values and my priorities to dictate what my next action steps will be and let go of what I can't control because I can't force someone else to do something that maybe in all honesty is good for them, right? But they're not ready. And we can, the, the, most direct way to inspire someone in their own readiness is to embrace your readiness. And if you're chasing after someone who's not ready, I mean, when it comes down to it, it means you're not ready either, right? Because when you are ready, you let go of that. You just don't have the time for it anymore. You don't have the patience for it anymore. And there's probably a part of you that really doesn't have it that, which is why you let go and you're allowing these two weeks to pass because you're playing with the idea of surrendering what you can't control. And of course, what's going to get kicked up in that process of allowance? Anxiety, attachment anxiety, because now we have all the biological messages turning on. Oh, but I need this person to survive. Oh, but what if I don't find somebody else that will enliven me in the same way? Um, and maybe you really do love that person. I'm not saying that there isn't real love there. I believe that we all have these we are all lighted beings of compassion and love and, of, and every person has a divine spark in them and there's something worth loving in everyone. Um, but we're not here to be a partner to everyone that we come across. We are here to be discerning curators of our relationships and our experiences. And it sounds like you're getting super good information um, that will help you curate the kind of relationship that you want, right? The kind of um, the mutual exchanges of energy and of values and of priorities and of time spent, those mutual exchanges that are more compatible because compatibility is a real thing, right? Um, because, you know, and attachment anxiety can attract us and it can repel us and it can do both at the same time. <laughs> but compatibility exists sort of parallel to that dance, right? They can intertwine, because oftentimes when we have an attachment style that compels us to value closeness versus personal autonomy, then they start to intersect, right? How compatible are my values here as it gets translated into things like time, energy, and effort spent together or apart, right? So there are some intersections there. 
But oftentimes what happens is the layers of attachment anxiety also fuel things like defensive communications. And, they, and those communications, when we are focusing on the content of them, can trigger our attachment systems. And all of a sudden we're mobilized. And so we're just responding to an increased sense of threat, not so much responding to the presence or the absence of a value, right? Of an important value or priority that if we were to be able to kind of like remove some of the goop of our defensive communications, we might be able to better articulate, oh, I am feeling more or less connected here because this is a value that we do actually share. And um, I'm not distracted from that truth by the words you're using <laughs> to express the frustration you feel or the, the degree of, of misalignment that you have residing within your spirit or residing in alignment with your spirit, right? Um, so anyway, the long story short is how do I inspire someone else to want to be in their own personal growth process, be in your personal growth process. Sounds like you've done the extent of what you can. You've shared the things that work for you. You've created opportunities for them to, um, be present with you in that process. You mentioned that, um, you also expressed consequences. You express some consequences for their behaviors, right? That's different than an ultimatum. And, and now it's up to them. Got to let that go, right? So what can I do and what would they have to do? They have to show up. You create the opportunity and then they have to show up and take advantage of it. And it sounds like you've done your due diligence. And so now it might be a bit of really sitting with that. And if you're noticing the anxiety, that's going to be nervous system regulation, body activation, working with expanding like a rubber band so that you get to hold the discomfort and, and continuously remind yourself through thought reframing exercises that you your highest priority is to be aligned to the essence of your being, to be aligned to your values, to be aligned to what it is that you want in relationship and to believe that it's possible for you because it is. That's a good question. Also remember to subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. I put out videos once a week and I wouldn't want you to miss out.